Hello everyone. Today's video is a bit of a departure from what I usually post, so if you don't enjoy this one, then maybe you'll enjoy me playing random games that I'm bad at. Today, I had a thought. AI is getting so advanced these days that soon us humans won't be needed to do tasks like art, music, comedy, and more relevant to today's video, writing. So what can I use these extremely advanced AI tools for? Well I had the same thought process as a misguided person on the internet discovering something within themselves from looking at Sally Acorn from the original Sonic cartoon. Right Sonic fanfiction. Sonic the Hedgehog had just finished another exciting adventure, saving the day yet again. As he sped through the lush green fields, the cool breeze brushed against his fur, invigorating his senses. It was a perfect day for exploration, and Sonic's curiosity led him to a bustling city. In this city, there was an extraordinary buzz of energy that Sonic couldn't ignore. As he raced through the streets, his bright blue quills caught the attention of everyone around him. People pointed, gasped, and cheered as he zipped past, leaving a trail of excitement in his wake. Among the crowd, a familiar face stood out. It was none other than the charismatic and energetic late night talk show host, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy had just finished another successful taping of The Tonight Show and decided to take a stroll to clear his mind. Sonic couldn't resist the opportunity to meet someone who exuded as much enthusiasm as he did. He skidded to a stop in front of Jimmy, who looked up in awe as the speedster took before him. Whoa, Sonic, I can't believe it's really you, Jimmy Fallon exclaimed, his eyes sparkling with excitement. Hey Jimmy, I've heard a lot about you, Sonic replied with a charming grin. You've got quite the reputation for your energetic personality. Jimmy chuckled, flattered by Sonic's words. And you, my friend, are the fastest hedgehog alive. This is incredible! Their conversation quickly flowed, filled with laughter and shared interests, they discovered a common love for video games, comedy, and adventure. It felt as though they had known each other for years, even though they had just met. As the sun began to set, casting a warm golden glow over the city, Sonic suggested that they continue their chat in a quieter place. Jimmy eagerly agreed, and they found a serene rooftop terrace overlooking the twinkling city lights. They sat side by side, their bodies close, but not touching, their eyes locked in an intense connection. The atmosphere was charged with an unspoken desire, the air thick with anticipation. Sonic's heart raced, mirroring his electrifying speed. In that moment, Sonic reached out a gloved hand, gently caressing Jimmy's cheek. Jimmy's breath hitched, and his eyes fluttered closed, surrendering to the sensation. Sonic leaned closer his lips barely grazing Jimmy's ear as he whispered, You bring joy and laughter to so many people, Jimmy. But right now, I want to make you feel something different. A shiver ran down Jimmy's spine as Sonic's words danced in his ear. Sonic's touch was as soft as the breeze, his embrace electrifying, yet tender. Their bodies moved together in a rhythm only they could hear, a harmonious blend of passion and playfulness. As the night sky enveloped in, their connection deepened, transcending the boundaries of time and space, they explored each other's desires, igniting flames of ecstasy that burned brighter than any spotlight. Their laughter filled the air, a symphony of shared pleasure. At that intimate moment, Sonic and Jimmy discovered a new kind of adventure, one that merged their worlds in a beautiful collision of speed, wit, and sensuality. Their connection was an unstoppable force. An unexpected union that brought together the blue burr and the comedic genius in a way neither of them could have ever imagined. And so, beneath the stars, Sonic and Jimmy fell into each other's arms, entangled in a love that defied logic and defied the ordinary. Their story became a legend, whispered in hushed tones by those who dared to believe in the power of unexpected connections, forever cherishing the memory of Sonic and Jimmy's extraordinary encounter. <laughs> Whoa, that was spicy. Can anyone else feel this? heat. Fan fiction isn't the only thing AI is good for. It can also answer some hard-hitting questions that we've all asked ourselves at some point in our lives, but I don't care about that. I just wanted the power scale, Courage the Cowardly Dog. Due to a cosmic anomaly, a fragment of kryptonite merges with Courage's DNA, granting him temporary superpowers whenever he musters enough courage. This kryptonite mutation affects Superman's powers, making him vulnerable to Courage's attacks. The Fear Amplifier, Courage stumbles upon a mysterious artifact known as the Fear Amplifier created by a deranged scientist. When activated, it enhances Courage's innate fear, transforming it into an energy that can harm Superman. Courage accidentally activates the device, unaware of its true power. Imaginary friends united. Courage's imagination manifests a legion of imaginary friends, each possessing unique and bizarre abilities. 
These friends willingly team up with Courage, their combined strengths proving to be more than a match for Superman's power, Eustace's insulting shout. Courage's grumpy and mean-spirited owner Eustace discovers a newfound ability to emit sonic waves from his insults. His hurtful words generate a sonic frequency that disrupts Superman's concentration, weakening his powers and leaving him vulnerable. The power of love, Muriel. Courage's kind-hearted owner unknowingly possesses an extraordinary aura of love and compassion. When Muriel witnesses Courage in danger, her unconditional love radiates with such intensity that it interferes with Superman's ability to focus, rendering him powerless against Courage's attacks. Really brings a tear to your eye, Courage with all the help of his imaginary friends and his loving owners, Courage the Cowardly Dog was able to take down the Man of Steel himself. That was certainly heartwarming, but writing that warms the heart is also a writing that taxes the emotions, so I've thought up a more whimsical story. Title, Mr. Krabs, the Benevolent Protector. Interior, Krusty Krab. Day. The Krusty Krab is bustling with customers, enjoying their delicious Krabby Patties. Mr. Krabs, the lovable crustacean, stands behind the cash register, wiping away a tear as he contemplates the episode's events. I can't believe it's gone to this. Spongebob approaches, noticing Mr. Krabs' distress. Mr. Krabs, what's wrong? Is everything alright? Oh, Spongebob, me boy. It's just that I feel a heavy burden upon me shoulders. I've been forced to make a difficult decision. Tell me, Mr. Krabs. I'm here for you no matter what. Mr. Krabs takes a deep breath, preparing to reveal his predicament. <sighs> Spongebob, me lad. The truth is, I knew about the Panu Raid. In fact, I orchestrated it. Spongebob's eyes widen with surprise. But, Mr. Krabs, why would you do such a thing? It's not what it seems, Spongebob. You see, a group of young rascals were planning on breaking into the Bikini Bottom Mall to steal all those poor, innocent undergarments. I couldn't let that happen. Wait, you mean you did it to stop the real thieves? Aye, Spongebob, me boy. That's right. I figured if I got involved, I could keep an eye on them and make sure no one got hurt. I may be a greedy crab, but I'd never let anyone harm our town or its residents. Oh, Mr. Krabs, I had no idea. You were just trying to protect Bikini Bottom? Mr. Krabs nods, gratitude filling his eyes. That's right, Spongebob. The welfare of this town and its citizens means more to me than all the treasure in Davy Jones' locker. But unfortunately, things got out of hand. Flashback. We see Mr. Krabs overseeing the Panu Raid, trying his best to maintain control and prevent any destruction. Interior, Bikini Bottom Night. Mr. Krabs confronts the culprits, speaking with authority. Listen up, you little scallywags. This Panu Raid ends now. I won't let you endanger our beloved town. End of flashback. Back to present. So what happened after that, Mr. Krabs? Spongebob me boy, it seems my efforts were misunderstood. The townspeople saw me as the villain, and the true thieves got away. I may have failed, but I did what I thought was right. Spongebob, touched. Mr. Krabs, you're a hero in my eyes. You risked your reputation to protect our home. Mr. Krabs smiles, tears welling up in his eyes once more. Thank you, lad. Your support means the world to me. No matter what happens, I'll always strive to do what's best for Bikini Bottom. Spongebob embraces Mr. Krabs, their bond strengthened by this newfound understanding. Fade out. You see, this is how they should actually censor old episodes that haven't aged well. Rather than removing the episode completely, rewrite it so that it teaches them a lesson about it. That was a joke. No one should actually do that. Well, that's about all my voice can take for today, but here, I'll write my own fanfiction. Pi had just finished a long day of recording and editing for his video. Hitting post, he decided that he would probably just go work out, get some food, and go to bed. And that's exactly what he did. However, he didn't take into account one thing. Within his seemingly flawless and all-encompassing plan, he had never once expected to gain a new subscriber. And that person was you. So why don't you make my fiction into a reality and like, comment, and subscribe. I hope to see you all again, and goodbye.